Piracy doesn't always pay. Sometimes cruising on the wrong side of the law gets you beaten, tortured, imprisoned, and even sentenced to death. But sometimes the worst option seems to be the one you'd least expect, spending time behind bars. Getting put in prison in the pirate era was effectively a death sentence, albeit a lingering and painful one. Dr. Samuel Johnson, a prolific 18th century writer, once expressed his feeling about life at sea through a pithy quote. No man will be a sailor who has contrivance enough to get himself into jail, for being in a ship is being in a jail with the chance of being drowned. A ship is worse than a jail. There is, in jail, better company, better conveniency of every kind, and a ship has the added disadvantage of being in danger. But how accurate was this? Was life at sea truly that much worse than the alternative? Ending up behind bars? Welcome to Walk the Plank. Prisons versus Jail Living on a pirate ship was a grim experience. Most pirates only owned one set of clothes, they had no plumbing, and their teeth were often rotting in their heads thanks to scurvy. It would have been a damp, stinking place, and yet being imprisoned would have been much worse. Many pirates who were put in prison to wait for their trials would die before their case even reached court, thanks to the punishing conditions they were forced to endure. Prisons in the pirate era weren't built to hold criminals for long, and instead were seen as temporary holding places before they either got released or sentenced to death or transportation. This difference is shown in the fact that people in the 17th century had two words for these places, jail and prison. While we use those words to mean pretty much the same thing nowadays, back in the pirate age, they were two different things. A jail was for petty criminals whilst they waited for their trial. If they were found innocent, they'd walk free. If not, they'd be punished or executed. A prison, on the other hand, meant that you were either a prisoner of war or a debtor. This distinction meant that sanitation, food, and even a place to sleep were considered a luxury that only the rich could afford. General Conditions Jail in the 18th century was much worse than even the crustiest of pirate ships. It would have been dark, damp, overcrowded, and above all, expensive. British authorities also didn't believe in segregated prisons, meaning that people could be forced to share a tiny room with little more than straw on the floor and a bucket to share. It wasn't uncommon to be sleeping three to a bed. In one example from 18th century Britain called Coldbath Fields, all types of criminals were accepted and thrown into the mix together. Men, women, children, murderers, debtors, and the mentally ill. As a result, you could be sharing a cell with a serious criminal and a schizophrenic one day, and the next be rubbing elbows with a gambler who'd lost his life savings. Prison Ships However, even sinking straw on a hard floor would be preferable to where many pirates ended up. Prison Ships as authorities cracked down on piracy, they created a problem that they hadn't predicted, where to keep the people awaiting trial for their crimes. With a growing number of prisoners and derelict ships crowding rivers and shores, the answer seemed to suggest itself. Prison ships. Once a ship had reached the end of its working life, it would often be left to rot in the water. When the authorities decided to use these ships as prisons, they were in such a state of decay that they were barely floating. Every porthole and hatch was boarded over and shut up to try keep the ship afloat, adding to the dark, damp environment of a prison ship. The ship itself was in terrible condition, but the people in charge of it were barely any better. Jailers were callous and felt no responsibility to keeping the prisoners in their care alive. They dished out brutal punishments, left corpses to rot next to living prisoners, and provided barely enough food for the prisoners to sustain themselves. In such an unhygienic situation, it's no surprise that people didn't last long. In fact, you were unlikely to survive more than a few weeks on a prison ship. Adding up to the poor diet, damp and rotten environments, brutal punishments that left wounds open for infection, pests, and meager rations, it's no wonder that people died regularly. Diseases like cholera, tuberculosis, and typhoid fever were all common on pirate ships, and spread like wildfire throughout the population on the ship. And even though waking up chained to a dead body was horrendous, the prisoners were often reluctant to report it until the smell became unbearable. And why? Mealtimes were irregular, and as most prisoners were simply kept below decks in the hold, it was easiest just to open a hatch and throw the food down. 
The prisoners were afraid that if they reported that someone had died, they might be given even less food. Prison ships were so bad that during the American Revolution, more people died from being kept in British prison ships than died on the battlefield. William the Kid Captain William Kidd was a Scottish privateer, initially a successful sailor and businessman before being accused of murder and piracy after an unfortunate journey in the late 17th century. The story goes that Kidd killed one of his crew and then was lured back to Boston under the promise that he'd be given clemency and a fair trial. Instead, he was betrayed by his former partner and promptly arrested as soon as he set foot on land. Before being transported back to England, Captain Kidd was held in Stone Prison in Boston from July 1699 to February of the following year. According to the sources, Kidd was kept almost exclusively in solitary confinement, which drove him temporarily insane. Once he came back to British soil, he was kept in Newgate's prison until his death in 1701. And even after death, Kidd was shown no mercy. His body was covered in pitch and left to rot in an open iron cage for the next three years. Another pirate who languished in prison was a man called William Hurl. Arrested for piracy around the Isle of Wight, he was put into solitary confinement in Marshalsea Prison in 1571. Hurl managed much better than Kidd did, as he was able to smuggle letters and other documents in and out of prison by taking advantage of what he called dark chinks in the walls. Newgate and Marshalsea Prison Pirates would have feared those two prisons above all others, Marshalsea and Newgate. Marshalsea was in Suffolk, just south of the River Thames. In 1722, Marshalsea was called the worst prison in the nation and described as a hopeless place with no windows, dirty floors, and massive iron chains and bars to hold the wretched prisoners inside. For the privilege of staying in Marshalsea in a shared bed, you'd be charged two shillings and sixpence a week, adding up to a staggering 155 pounds a year. Abuse in this prison was also staggeringly common, with reports of people who'd been kept there for over a year ending up naked and half dead, as they couldn't afford food or to remove their shackles. Some prisoners survived by cooking the rats that infested the prison, whilst others resorted to chewing the iron bars to stave off their hunger. Other descriptions report excessively crowded rooms with up to 50 people locked in rooms that were barely 16 feet square. One room was said to have had 32 men locked inside every night that measured 16 by 14 feet. The other infamous prison in British history is Newgate. Built just within the city bounds, it was built in the 12th century and was used to house criminals for well over 700 years. It embodied the worst things about the penal system, being consistently overcrowded and unsanitary, and jailers who were charged for everything from the shackles that the prisoners wore to the food that they ate. Most pirates were common men who couldn't afford to pay the bribes to get better treatment, or even in some cases, afford to leave once their sentence was up. According to one record keeper, prisoners in Marshall Sea would be left to starve once they ran out of money. Punishment in Prison Prisons were not places of reform and rehabilitation during the pirate era, instead being seen as warnings against committing crimes. As a result, prisoners were treated abominably and would often be punished brutally. Some of the punishments in prison would have included torture and beatings. Getting beaten in prison was one of the most common punishments, particularly if you'd been found guilty of thievery or poor conduct. Fortunately, these crimes weren't seen to be worthy of an extended time behind bars and you'd be released within a few weeks, albeit with more scars. Other prisoners would have been tortured to get them to spill their secrets. Although it's not confirmed, it's likely that Captain Kidd would have been tortured to get him to spill the beans on where he buried his treasure. Thumbscrews were commonly used to extract information. Hard labor. One of the methods was to sentence someone to hard labor. This was normally beating hemp or alternatively picking oakum. Picking oakum was the process of unwinding an old rope into its component fibers so they could be used again to make new ropes. It was a brutal job that caused your fingers to bleed and develop thick black scars, as well as long-term issues like nerve damage and tendonitis. As you unpick the rope with your fingernails, your hands cramp and your nails crack and split. Some prisoners even said that picking oakum and beating hemp was worse than breaking stones. Solitary Confinement Although less physically damaging, solitary confinement, or the strong room as it was called in Marshall Sea, was a brutal punishment inflicted on some prisoners during their incarceration. 
The strong room was a room above a sewer where dead bodies were kept, with no windows and no lights. Sometimes people were sentenced to a number of days here with the aim of breaking their will and making them behave. Diseases Prisons were notoriously disease-ridden, especially as they were crawling with lice and other pests that could transmit illnesses terrifyingly quickly. It was normal for people to go into prison healthy and emerge irreversibly changed thanks to a chronic illness. Typhus, otherwise known as jail fever, was one of the most common diseases at the time in prisons. Inmates who were forced into close quarters would be susceptible to the disease, which is spread by proximity and body lice. Once an outbreak happened in a prison, it would spread quickly thanks to the poor sanitary conditions. Symptoms of the disease would include a sudden fever, a rash, headaches, and other flu-like signs. If it went untreated, it often proved fatal. In the mid-18th century, English authorities said that more people died from jail fever than had been executed, and around 25% of people kept in prison died from the disease each year. Death As we said before, most pirates weren't kept in prison for long sentences, as they were only being held temporarily before their trial. Most pirates ended up facing the hangman's noose, and for pirates, this was an excruciating end. In later centuries, hangmen were just trying to get the job over and done with, but in the 16th and 17th centuries, they really wanted to make a spectacle to put people off becoming pirates. As a result, hanging was slow and painful, and it could take someone several minutes to die. In the absence of a permanent gallows, people had to make do with what they had to hang someone. Often, this meant putting a rope around someone's neck and then hauling them up off the ground, or alternatively kicking a stool or chair out from underneath their feet to leave them dangling in midair, slowly suffocating under their own weight. Prison in the pirate era was a brutal punishment that few survived. The conditions that people were subjected to left them maimed and scarred, if not insane, from the torture and solitude. So, perhaps Dr. Johnson wasn't right. A ship is not really that much worse than a jail. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one. Have a great week. Cheers.